Thanksgiving is saved. Boil a Boston butt, and then she would cook the collards in the same water that she boiled the butt in. <laughs> That's fun. Wow, this video is gonna be all over the place, literally. It's a rough life, isn't it, Bonnie? Most of them are here, maybe. B A U R Y. Close. You got the U A R Y right. F E F E D A U and F A <laughs> and F E D E A. All right, we're just going to tell her. F-E-V-R-U-A-R-Y. So close. That's a really hard word. <laughs> I appreciate y'all helping each other with school. Here's hoping Miss Jackson has collards. Woo -woo. She does. And they're beautiful. Okay. Thanksgiving is saved. So here's the thing. I am responsible for two things on Thanksgiving with my family. I go to my dad's and I'm responsible for collards and sweet potato casserole. And I have sweet potatoes coming out of my ears right now because some people have given us some. So we're, I'm also going to do some sweet potato pies. Anyway, what I do every single year is wait until the day before to go find collards. And in the past, this has proved proven proven that I can't talk. Proven problematic. Say that five times fast. So, I just came up to Miss Jackson's to see if she had collards. And yes, she saved Thanksgiving. She saved the day. I got basically the last of what she had, but they're beautiful. That right there. That right there is going to cook down. You're going to see. I'm going to take you along in the whole collard making process. So, Hang tight. We're cooking collards today. Country stores. Nothing like them. Save the day all the time. All the little things I need that I can't necessarily always find anywhere else. Thank you, Miss Jackson. Okay, stop number two. Well, actually, it's stop number three or four. But anyway, second food-related stop. If you're new here, I have a slight love affair with my local Piggly Wiggly. It's a grocery store um, because basically it is my, it's my cheaters. It's where everybody knows my name and they're always glad I came. And I mean, they even offer to take my groceries to the, to my truck. I mean, I don't usually do that, but it's really sweet when they offer. Um, yeah. It's just a great place. It makes me happy going here. It's a smaller grocery store. I can get in and out. I dig the pig. And also because it reminds me of the same Piggly Wiggly where my mom grew up down in Nowheresville, Eastern North Carolina. There was a Piggly Wiggly and it has the same smell. You know how smells like relate you to things? I'm not saying it's like a really great smell but it's this piggly wiggly smell and it just takes me back to my childhood and <sighs> I love the pig this is what I'm talking about right here piggly wiggly yep all right y'all let's go home and cook I'm actually excited about a slow ish afternoon in the kitchen my son is helping my husband feed my girl has finished her schoolwork. We didn't do a whole lot today. It's Thanksgiving, almost. Um, so I enjoy these times. I enjoy the holidays and being in my kitchen cooking. So I'm excited to take you along. We haven't cooked in a while, you know? Yeah, we're overdue for some cooking. So let it be. Okay, we're in go mode. Um, check it out. 
Guess what that is? It's not turkey. It's not chicken. It's definitely not beef. That, my friends, would be squirrel. I'm cooking squirrel again because my son filled the freezer up with squirrel and he wants squirrel dumplings. So his mama's gonna make squirrel dumplings tonight, not for Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving Eve, that's what we're having for Thanksgiving Eve. I've got my sweet potatoes going though. Getting ready to take those off. Then I'm gonna wash some collars and get them going and show you how a North Carolina girl cooks collards. <laughs> It's very exciting. This is going to be riveting. So just, just hold on, hold on to your hats, okay? Okay, the first step in collard preparation, as far as I'm concerned anyway, is stripping the leaves off the stalk and then washing them and washing them good. Generally, I wash them two to three times. Um, some people do not strip them. They don't. They leave them fully clothed. I prefer to strip them because the stalks can be kind of um, tough. So first, that's what we're doing first. Stalk stripped. You see how easy that is? It's very easy. And then I just put them, well, hmm, put them in the sink to clean them. all stripped. Now they're going to get washed and cleaned and then they're going to get cooked. When I buy them like that, it looks like there is an enormous amount, but they actually cook way down and now I'm, I'm somewhat worried I might not have enough. <laughs> You'll see what I'm saying. You'll see. Hold on. We're going to let this thing fill up with water. And then we're gonna move them to the other side and do the same thing about three times. Nobody wants dirty, gritty collars. These are actually very clean already, but still. Safety first. See, just like Sturgill Simpson says, looks can be deceiving. That was dirty. So we're gonna wash them again. Okay. Next, once the collards are washed and stripped and prepped, then I put them in pots. I got two big pots here and I season them with some kind, some kind of ham. That's nice, my children playing nicely together. Anyway, my granny Austin is the one in our family that I always cook collards. I grew up on eating Eastern North Carolina collards. Okay, my granddaddy always had a garden. He was a potato farmer, but he always had a garden and he always had collards. So, they're greens. I haven't even said that. Obviously, they're greens, like turnip greens. Up here, my husband grew up on turnip greens. I grew up on collard greens. Anywho, back to the seasoning. My granny always would cook or boil a Boston butt, and then she would cook the collards in the same water that she boiled the butt in. <laughs> That's fun. So immature, but it's funny. Okay, anyway, I, I don't typically do that. I use some kind of ham hock or seasoning. My dad brought me these pieces that he bought somewhere recently. It's ham. What was it? Some kind of ham. I don't know, I'm throwing it away. Hold on. Country cured ham trimmings. Wow, this video is gonna be all over the place. Literally. Okay. So these are ham trimmings. Sometimes I'll use a ham base powder. I just ran out of that the other night, which I just remembered. So we're just going with this. I might add some extra salt and we're gonna let it cook down for several hours. Probably two would be enough, but I'll probably let them cook longer than that and then chop them up and eat them. Well, we'll eat them tomorrow, but yeah, that's all there is to it. It can be an acquired taste for some people, but I, I love them and my kids love them and that makes me happy and I feel like my granny would be proud that I'm carrying on the collared tradition for the Austin family.
the Austin family line. So that's that. On to sweet potatoes. All right, now we have sweet potato casserole going down. And um, this is a recipe from my second mom, Sharon Lawrence. Yeah, she's my dad's cousin, but she's like my second mom. I grew up right next door. Anyway, I've always used her recipe and I've decided to be a rebel today, y'all. I've decided to substitute half and half for every recipe that calls for milk. Booyah, that's what I'm doing. Okay, sweet potato casserole down. Sweet potato pie's coming up. Obviously, I worked very long and very hard on these pie crusts. Can you tell? I'm gonna venture to guess that some of y'all do not really understand sweet potato pies. You're used to pumpkin pies and pumpkin pies are great. I love pumpkin pie, but I grew up on sweet potato pie. North Carolina is, is like the Mecca for sweet potatoes. It's one of our top producing, it's one of our top crops. I should know the numbers, but I can't remember. Anyway, sweet potatoes are a big deal in North Carolina and sweet potato pies are also a big deal. If you have never tried it, do not knock it until you try it, okay? They're good. And basically, you make it very similar to a pumpkin pie. In fact, I even put some pumpkin pie spice in it. I don't think the recipe calls for that, but I do it anyway. And it's yummy. So, trust me, sweet potato pie. I mean, trust me, sweet potato pie. It's good stuff. I got pecans in my teeth where I was eating, testing the topping for the sweet potato casserole. Yeah. And this recipe is actually my mom's. Uh -huh. It was my mom's. This cookbook, oh, the cover's missing. <laughs> Hold on. Here's the cover. I'm sorry. Let me just get a little nostalgic for a second. This was our old um, church cookbook. <laughs> Excuse me. That was my mom's. And it's obviously been well used and loved. She had recipes tagged and flagged. And um, I use it several times a year for several things that I make every year. One being her sweet potato pie. There you go. If you wanna write that down, go for it. Sweet milk. It took me a while to realize that sweet milk is just milk. Funny story. So my granny, Grace, my dad's mother, um, she, her recipe for pound cake called for sweet milk. I did not know what sweet milk meant. I thought she meant sweet condensed milk, so I made my first pound cake that I ever tried to make with sweet condensed milk. Guess what, y'all? It turned out like a brick. Mm -hmm. Sweet milk was just another way of saying milk, whole milk. Yeah, I learned that the hard way. It was so funny when I went to tell her what I did and I didn't know why my cake didn't turn out. And I said, I mean, sweet milk. You said sweet milk. That's condensed milk, right? No, no sugar. That's just milk. So now you know. The more you know. Yeah. Well, I don't know what they're going to taste like, but they look good, y'all. And they smell really good. And we're definitely going to have to dig into one tonight before Thanksgiving. So there you go. Sweet potato pies. Colors. I condensed them into one pot. See, they cook down that much. Yep. Yeah. And and we're about to have some squirrel dumplings. Okay, the next step in the collard making process is the chopping. Chopping the collards. Chop, chop, chop. So the juice in the collards is called pot liquor. That's what my granny always called it. What it is, pot liquor. I don't know why. <laughs> Good as liquor, but what are you pot. doing? <laughs> what are you videoing? What are you videoing? <laughs> I'm videoing you and Wesley chopping collards. Granny would be proud. <laughs> That's that. Hey, how was that sweet potato pie? Good. It was the best stuff. The best stuff. <laughs> it was really good. We had a good supper. And your squirrel dumplings. Very good. Very good. They were very good. They were as good as any chicken dumplings you ever had, weren't they? Yeah. Better. Better. Thank you. All right. This will do it for tonight. We're about to close this kitchen up.
But and tomorrow we have Thanksgiving. You don't have a door. It's a rough life, isn't it, Bonnie? You hadn't even had any turkey yet, and you're already falling asleep. Yeah. <laughs> My sweet baby. Happy belated Thanksgiving, everybody. By the time you see this, it'll be past. We're going to feed some cows. Then we're going to go clean up and head to see my family for the day. And I'll bring you some turkey back, okay? <laughs> Smoke is rolling this morning. Well, I just got out of feeding duties this morning. My husband's best friend came in town. He's been working out in town. He came, he came up and said he would take over. So, no silage feeding for me today. Not complaining. I think we're going to um, try to clean house and get ready to decorate some for Christmas. The kids are excited to do that. So, hopefully a low-key, low-key day here. Well, somewhat. <laughs> girl is just very anxious to what? Put up Christmas decorations. Put up Christmas decorations. So we just loaded the mule. We're gonna go unload the mule. See what we can do today while the sun's shining before the rain comes. Lots of little cowboy bobbleheads because everybody needs cowboy bobbleheads <laughs> and lights. Yeah. Is that good? What are you gonna make? Oatmeal cookies. Oatmeal cookies. Oatmeal cream pies. Cream pies. Yeah. See how that goes. Same different. Except with icing. Yeah. <laughs> First, I feel like I need to share this little moment between between a man and his dog. Look at Gus. Can't see him very well through the screen. I wait here. <laughs> are you kidding me? How sweet is that? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I love you, Daddy. I love you. <laughs> he sees me. I had to capture that while it was happening. There's been some wood splitting going on. We usually have that full of wood. We're out. We've got a lot of wood to get cut and split. All right, we have oatmeal cream pies in the making. Doing a good job. Mmm. It's kind of hard not to eat one yet, isn't it? <laughs> I like the round ones. I'm gonna eat that one because it's round. I like that. One. Okay. Yeah, some of them are a little squarish. Yeah. It's okay. It's hip to be square. Yeah. 